In this video, we learn about perpendicular bisectors. In particular, we learn what a perpendicular bisector is, as well as how to find its equation. And we're going to learn the method step by step. Now, to understand what a perpendicular bisector is, consider the two points P and Q that I've drawn on the right-hand side of the screen here. Now, if I join these two points, like so, then it creates the line segment PQ. Now, the perpendicular bisector to PQ is the line which passes through the midpoint of PQ at a right angle. And so let's see, let me try and illustrate that. I'll say that the midpoint of PQ is right here, and I'll go ahead and say that it's called capital M for midpoint. And so by very definition, the midpoint M cuts PQ into two equal segments, PM and MQ. And so the perpendicular bisector to PQ is the line which passes through the midpoint M at a right angle to PQ. So that would look something like what I'm drawing right now. There we go. And I'll place arrowheads at the end of this line to indicate that it goes on forever. And of course, I'll draw a little right angle right here. Okay, so this blue line is the perpendicular bisector to this line segment PQ. And what's special about a perpendicular bisector like this one is that it's made of all the points that are equidistant from the two endpoints P and Q, where equidistant means equally far away. So for instance, the point that I'm highlighting right now on the perpendicular bisector is equally far away from the point P as it is from the point Q. We say that this point is equidistant from P and Q. And the same can be said of any point along this perpendicular bisector. And as we'll soon be seeing, knowing how to find the equation of a perpendicular bisector is very important. So let's move on and see how that's done. And for that, let's go ahead and give these two endpoints some actual coordinates. Let's see, I'll say that P has coordinates 1, 2, and that Q has coordinates 3, 6. And now with these coordinates in mind, here are four steps, I'll just write that, four steps to find a perpendicular bisector. And I'll just write four steps for perpendicular bisector. Okay, now the first thing we need to do, step one, is find the coordinates of the midpoint M of the line segment. And so I'll just write find midpoint, find midpoint. And I'll even say midpoint capital M. Okay, well the midpoint, capital M, is such that its x and y coordinates are the averages of the x and the y coordinates of the two endpoints, so in this case p and q. Here's what I mean. The x coordinate of the midpoint will be the average of 1 and 3. And so I'll go ahead and write that. That's the average of 1 and 3. So that's 1 plus 3 over 2. Similarly, the y coordinate of the midpoint will be the average of the y coordinates of the endpoint. So that's the average of 2 and 6. And so I'll just write that, that's 2 plus 6 over 2. And now of course 1 plus 3 is 4, and 2 plus 6 is 8. So the coordinates of the midpoint M quickly turn into 4 divided by 2, which is 2, and 8 divided by 2, which is 4. And so we can quickly write two dots, the midpoint capital M has coordinates 2, 4. And that's the first step done. We now have the coordinates of the midpoint. And in fact, I'll add those coordinates to our diagram over here. The midpoint M has coordinates 2, 4. There we go. Next, I move on to step 2. And in step 2, we need to find the gradient, or slope, of the line segment we started off with. So in this case, that's the line segment PQ. And so I'll go ahead and write gradient, find the gradient, or the slope, so I'll just write slash slope, of PQ. Now, remember, given the x and y coordinates of two points, there's a nice formula for finding the gradient of the line passing through those two points. And I'll remind us of that formula in the upper right-hand corner. The formula is the gradient, or slope, m, is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that formula. There we go. Now, what matters in this formula is that the coordinates x1, y1 are the x and y coordinates of one of the endpoints, and the coordinates x2, y2 
are the coordinates of the other endpoint. And so what I'll do here is I'll say that the point P has coordinates x1, y1, and in fact I'll even write that underneath the coordinates here. I'll say that 1 is x1 and 2 is y1, and therefore Q has the coordinates x2, y2. And so I'll write that underneath as well, that's x2, y2. There we go. And so using this formula as well as the coordinates we have here, we can go ahead and state that the gradient or slope of PQ is lowercase m, which equals to y2 minus y1, so that's 6 minus 2, and I'll go ahead and write that, that's 6 minus 2, over x2 minus x1, so that's 3 minus 1. And so that's 3 minus 1. Now, 6 minus 2 is 4, and 3 minus 1 is 2, so this turns into 4 over 2. And finally, since 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2, we can go ahead and state that the gradient, or the slope of PQ, is m, which equals to 2. And that's step 2 taken care of. We now know that the line segment PQ has a gradient of 2. So, I move on to step 3. Now, in step 3, we're going to use the result we just found, so that was the gradient of PQ, to find the gradient, or slope, of the perpendicular bisector. And so I'll just go ahead and write that step 3 is about finding the gradient, gradient, of the perpendicular bisector. So I'll just write perpendicular bisector. There we go. Okay, now to find the gradient of the perpendicular bisector using the gradient of PQ, we need to make use of an important rule. And that rule is that two lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their gradients is equal to negative 1. And I know that sounds terribly complicated. Don't worry, I'm going to simplify that in just a minute. But for now, in the upper right-hand corner, I'll write down the rule, which is that a line y equals to m sub 1 x plus c sub 1, and a second line y equals to m sub 2 times x plus c sub 2, are perpendicular if and only if the product of their gradients, so m1 times m2, is equal to negative 1. And that's the important result to remember. If two lines are perpendicular, then the product of their gradients will always equal to negative 1. Now, although this is an important result, the good news is, in practice, it's actually quite easy to use. Here's the idea. One of the things we definitely know about the perpendicular bisector of PQ is that it's perpendicular to the line segment PQ. Consequently, its gradient, which I'll go ahead and call M, must be such that if we multiply it by the gradient of PQ, so that's 2, and I'll go ahead and write M times 2, then for it to be perpendicular, the result must equal negative 1. And so I'll write that as well, m times 2 has to be equal to negative 1. And now that we've actually used this rule and written it out here, we can see that it's actually not that difficult. Indeed, to find the gradient of the perpendicular bisector, all we need to do is get rid of this 2 that's multiplying the m. And since that 2 is multiplying m, to get rid of it, we're going to divide by 2. And we do so on both sides of that equation. And that quickly leads us to m, equals to negative 1 over 2. And that's the gradient. And I should say, if you prefer working with decimals, then you could also write that this equals to negative 0 0.5. That would be a perfectly acceptable answer. And before moving on to the fourth and final step, go ahead and check. Take negative 0 0.5 and multiply it by 2, and you'll find that it's equal to negative 1 which confirms that this is indeed the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. That being said, I move on to the fourth and final step, and that is to find the perpendicular bisector's equation. And so I'll just write perpendicular bisector's perpendicular bisector's equation. Okay, well first of all, the perpendicular bisector is a line. Consequently, its equation can definitely be written in the form y equals to mx plus c. Furthermore, we saw in step 3 that the gradient m is equal to negative 1 over 2, or negative 0.5. And so replacing m by negative 1 over 2, 
We can go one step further here and say that its equation looks like y equals to negative 1 over 2 times x plus c. And I should say, if ever you're troubled by the fact that I placed the negative in front of the fraction instead of in front of the 1 here, don't worry. It's worth remembering that whether we have negative a over b, or a over negative b, or negative a over b, those are all equal. So negative 1 over 2 is the same thing as negative 1 over 2. That being said, I carry on. All we need to fully define this perpendicular bisector's equation is to find the value of c. And for that, all we need are the x and y coordinates of a point through which we know the perpendicular bisector passes. And looking at what we have here, well, we don't have many options. The only point we know the perpendicular bisector passes through for sure is the midpoint of the line segment, that's point m. And remember, we had found the coordinates of m in step 1. Indeed, the coordinates of the midpoint were 2, 4. And so what I'll do here is I'll just write using, using the midpoint capital M with coordinates 2, 4, we can state that since the perpendicular bisector has to pass through this point, that tells us that when x equals to 2, y has to equal to 4. Consequently, if we replace x by 2 and y by 4, then the equation has to hold. And that leads to an equation to find c. Here's what I mean. I'll replace y by 4 and x by 2. And in doing so, this equation becomes 4 equals to negative 1 half times 2 plus c. Where again, all I've done is replace y by 4 and x by 2. Now, on the right-hand side here, we have negative 1 half times 2. Well, 1 half times 2 is a half of 2, which is just 1. And so this quickly turns into 4 equals to negative 1 plus c. Finally, solving this equation for the unknown c, we'll obtain its value. And so to do that, I'll get rid of this 1 that's being subtracted from the right-hand side, and I do so by adding 1 to both sides of the equation which leads to 4 plus 1, which is 5 on the left-hand side, so 5 equals to negative 1 plus 1, which is 0, plus c. So that's 5 equals to c. In other words, c equals to 5. And I'll go ahead and box that result. There we go. Finally, now that we know the value of c, we can state the perpendicular bisector's equation. Indeed, we can now write y equals to negative one-half of x plus five. And that's the final answer. And there we go. We now know what a perpendicular bisector is, as well as four steps for finding its equation. And that's it for this tutorial.